asked IBM if it could give me an updated number of employees that work behind these walls or at the very least confirm the number the DED gave me. Everyone there refused to go on camera. Since the last time I checked in with you, you can see that the room has cleared out quite a bit. There's still about a dozen or so people here. That adds up to more than a quarter million dollars. That budget now funds 22 Head Start centers across mid-Missouri. This is the 62-page suggestion to the Missouri Western District Court of Appeals from Attorney General Chris Coster. More than two dozen people are sick tonight after a conference at this hotel. Find out why another conference is still pushing forward. And so several other businesses, like this one right here, don't keep closing. This is my car, and this is what happened when I collided with a deer. That missing link was a young man. Another witness said she spotted at the scene of the crime on the night of the murder. But just a couple hours ago, there were dozens of workers lined up along the road over that way, demanding tens of thousands of dollars. As of right now, no one's sure what caused the sickness at the Truman Hotel here behind me. I talked to the general manager today. She said the health department investigated the hotel today but could not find anything wrong. Now there's another conference underway here. I was here earlier when some of the 675 members of the state's Elks Association began showing up. They say they've been coming here twice a year for the past 40 years and won't let this mystery illness scare them away. We're not worried. We feel everything will be all right. Um, we have told our people if anyone has any concern that they would not feel comfortable staying here. Uh, if they wish to go someplace else, they can. But so far, no one has felt that they needed to leave. Earlier today, we talked to the Coroner's Association, and the former president said it's very scary only because we have no idea the cause. Right now, 20 to 25 percent of our members are sick. We hope the health department can figure out the cause quickly. The general manager says that she's closed some of the rooms that the sick people stayed in and also hopes to find out the cause of the sickness soon. Reporting live from Jefferson City, Danielle McCarthy, KOMU 8 News. Meanwhile, organizations in mid-Missouri are preparing for the effects of the sequester. Today, Central Missouri Community Action got word from the National Head Start Office about a budget cut it says will have a significant impact. It's still all smiles at the 22 Head Start centers across mid-Missouri, despite some bad news. Just today we received a notice from the um, Office of Head Start, and they're advising us that we should expect a 5% cut. Um, from 2013 federal funds. Central Missouri Community Action says that means turning away about 40 low-income families for upcoming summer and fall enrollment. And Head Start mom Heather Bilderback says she's worried she and her son could be one of them. It, it, it's a big fear of mine and my son would be nowhere real estate without Head Start. But the organization and its families say that along with that fear comes hope. Well, there's a lot of support for these programs. Um, so it's possible that they could come up with some sort of compromise. Um, I, I just haven't seen any willingness on anybody's part to, to do that. Central Missouri Community Action says if the sequester cuts go into effect, we'll wait to turn families away until the school year is over in May. Even with dozens of workers recently fired and kicked off the property, you can still hear the sounds of construction coming from the Aspen Heights construction site. Oh, they kicked us out of our motels. They uh, throwed us off the job site, got police out here telling us we'll be arrested if we come back in there. I just want my money so I can go home. Price is just one of what he estimates to be about 100 workers who have gotten little to no money for their work. We got probably $100 between us in five weeks. We still ain't got no money yet. You know, we done been here a whole month. You know, some people done been here longer than that. The group says its contractor, Our Energy, has been trying to get them their money since January 16th, but has been unable to because Aspen Heights won't give them the money. But Aspen Heights gave us a different story, saying it's waiting on Our Energy to provide a list of the workers' names and how much they're owed before the company pays up. I've done spent all my money up here now. I got bills back home, and you know, what are we supposed to do? After hours of waiting, Aspen Heights officials called some of the workers onto the site to work things out. They told us there's nothing that they could do about our money until next week. Uh, they could give us gas money to go home on. Uh, really sorry, there's nothing they can do, nothing they can help us with. And with that, they took the gas money and headed out, leaving unsatisfied and not knowing when or if they'll ever get what they say they were promised. Danielle McCarthy, KOMU 8 News, Columbia. You might expect Rios' ex-wife would hate him and want him put away for life. But even though he tore the family apart, she and even her parents have a different side to the story. She said, oh, you know, from what I hear, 
you know, it sounds like you may be going home tomorrow. He's spent nearly nine years in prison waiting for a miracle. And back at home in Colombia, his former in-laws are waiting for a miracle, too. You know, miracles do happen, and we know that. We would like to live long enough to see him come out of prison. It's been a long time, but the Sullivans say they sometimes find their minds wandering back to that day in June 2004 when their former son-in-law delivered the news that would forever change their lives. We sat in this living room, and he sat on the sofa and admitted that he had had this affair with Jesse, but that he had absolutely nothing to do with Jesse's murder. The Sullivans admit they didn't believe Rios right away, but they say it wasn't long before they were convinced Rios was the wrong man, even if believing him came at a cost. Obviously, he hurt our daughter. He hurt our family. As we went through the trial uh, and the evidence that was presented, it was... He didn't do it. And even though Rios caused some of her darkest days and turned her world upside down, their daughter Libby says she can't turn her back on her ex-husband. And I just told myself, until, I'm, until I see something that is proof, I mean, until I see something that shows me that he did this, I'm, I've got to be supportive, you know? Um, and I just still haven't seen that. For Libby, things have never added up. The fact that I was... I was there at our house, awake, saw him come home. I think to me, those things, I mean, I, you can't change that. Abrasions and bruises. Of course, it's a different story for the case's prosecuting attorney, Morley Swingle. To him, the math makes perfect sense. His DNA is on the sheets. His DNA is in three places. It's on, it's on the hairs on the victim's chest, it's under the victim's fingernails, and it's on the victim's sheets. That's killer's DNA in three different places. It's not a defense, it's more evidence of his guilt. The defense claimed those hairs were evidence of sex, not murder. But Columbia Police Chief at the time, Randy Bame, says those hairs were what sealed the deal for him. Although getting to that conclusion wasn't easy. Another conflict that we had to deal with that was very unusual is that, you know, his family were supporting him. Again, understandably, they believed him. They didn't believe us, and so all of, uh, and we consider, you know, like for instance, his wife, part of our CPD family, and so all of a sudden we had a real conflict there, and we really couldn't reach out and support her because she didn't trust us. Rios's family says it acknowledges what Swingle, Bain, the jurors, and countless others say about the evidence against him, but there's not a doubt in their minds. Their lives are now dedicated to disproving Rios's guilt. It's not a matter of trying to defend him because he was our son-in-law. It's because we truly believe he is innocent. And it's wrong for someone who's innocent to be in jail uh, for the rest of their lives. And it's just, it's just wrong. And what that also means then is there is somebody out there who did commit the murder. But the family says there's another reason to go on this campaign of sorts. A more important reason. We want to be able to look at our grandson and say we believed your father was innocent and we did everything we could. Rios has a son. Hey Grayson. I love you bud. Grayson was merely months old at the time of the murder. You know now he's old enough that he's starting to ask questions. There was one night we were laying in bed tucking him in you know and he just said but mom if he didn't do it why, aren't, why don't you tell somebody? And his mom and grandparents aren't the only ones getting questions. They sat there for about 10 or 15 minutes and, um, you know, basically, tell me why you're here, Dad, you know? And um, <sighs> I tell people it was a uh, profound thing to watch. He's asking his dad questions, too. Still hurting and making sense of all that had happened, Libby made the difficult decision while Grayson was still very small to make his dad a part of his life. So as often as possible, the Sullivans take their now eight-year-old grandson and make the long trek to Rios' new home in South Dakota. The penitentiary doesn't allow cameras inside, but we recorded a separate interview with Rios on the phone. It's, it's a double sword, uh, knowing that my family is out there, uh, my son, growing older, but on the, on the flip side, uh, they, they keep going, that love keeps me going.
So what do the Sullivans, their daughter, and former son-in-law hope will come of their efforts? I think what we are hoping is that we can raise some awareness that in this case, uh, justice was not done. And with all the time they spend waiting, the Sullivans say it gives them time to plan for that one day in the future they look forward to most. In my mind, I planned what the menu would be. Let me celebrate that. Tell us. <laughs> oh, shrimp. 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 <laughs> Steve loves shrimp. We have a huge bowl of shrimp out there for him. Yeah. In part three of our three-part special report, we'll take an in-depth look at how the Columbia Police Department handled the situation and why they're sure the right man is behind bars.